Elden Ring. It's too easy for me, so I made it harder by introducing just a couple of rules. No rolling, and also no usage of quick step or bloodhound step. No blocking, but shields can be used for other purposes like parrying. No healing flask, because why the hell not? No sorceries, incantations or summoning. No status effect weapon infusions like bleed, frost or poison. No somber weapons, as to avoid most of the OP weapons in the game. And no crafting, because some craftable items can trivialize certain bosses. On top of that, I am required to beat all the Remembrance bosses while region locked. That means that, for example, we cannot leave Limgrave before beating Godric or leave Liurnia before Renala, etc. If this sounds impossible, that's because it is. But when it comes to this game, there is almost always a way. Jesus take the wheel. But first, let me thank the sponsor of this video, Final Fantasy XIV Online. Final Fantasy XIV Online is an MMORPG where you create your own hero, explore rich worlds, fight a variety of enemies and team up with your buddies for thrilling raids and dungeons. The game is currently experiencing a fan festival around the world for the announcement of the newest update 7.0 together with the expansion Dawn Trail, so there is no better time to join in the adventures of Aeorza. Final Fantasy XIV Online offers a variety of content to please pretty much any kind of player. Craft, trade and master multiple professions form bonds with unforgettable characters, the possibilities are endless. The player fights using a combination of physical attacks, weapon skills and magical attacks, depending on your class, like Marauder or Conjurer. Classes also have their extensions which are called jobs, like Warrior or White Mage, which are strict upgrades to the previous class. Jobs are not mutually exclusive though, given enough time, you can level all jobs and classes on a single character, so there is no need to create a new character to try out different things. You can partake in the adventures of Final Fantasy XIV online for free, because the game offers a free trial up to and including the first expansion Heavensward or until level 60. Since the game is available on PlayStation, Windows, Mac and coming to Xbox in 2024, there is literally no excuse for not giving it a go. And if you eventually decide to stick around, all the characters and in-game progression will carry over once you upgrade from free trial to the full game. Again, huge thanks for Final Fantasy XIV for sponsoring this video. The game is great fun, but let's go back now to our scheduled program. There are two ways of approaching a challenge like this one. The first being is to learn all the boss patterns to a T and space everything perfectly as to never get hit. I'll refer to this as the dexterity route. Or, a more fun way in my opinion, kill all the bosses so fast that they won't even have a chance to respond with a single attack. Or the Giga Chad strength route. Since we don't under any circumstances level dexterity on this channel, we will of course choose the latter option. Luckily, here in the starting area there are some good things to set up this build. First of all, we need a weapon, and for the start I choose the Great Axe, you will see why shortly. To make this thing do a buttload of damage, we are gonna supplement it with the Ash of War Golden Vow, the Axe Talisman, which boosts charge attack damage, the Spiked Cracked Tear, which does the same thing, and another Ash of War called Determination. A very fitting name because it boosts the damage of your next attack by 60%, which is a lot. After all that is set up, it's time to pay our boy Patches a nice visit. After somehow clearing out Nerejus, we go and stab our boy Patches a few times. This will allow us to buy from him the Margit Shackle, which will be essential for both Margit and Morgoth later on. But for now, we're just gonna upgrade our weapon to the maximum of plus 3 and go deal with the first problem at hand, Margit. Now it's time to solve some problems. Because we cannot avoid attacks easily, our only option is basically to bum rush and Donkey Kong all the bosses before they manage to do anything. My main strategy here was to utilize the stuns from the shackle in tandem with poise breaks you can achieve from the Great Axe to completely mobilize him throughout the fight. While this is a good strategy in theory, it's not really an easy one to pull off, so it took a few dozen attempts of testing to get it done right. Eventually though, all the stars align and we get this absolutely gorgeous Margit kill. Cube. Break his poise, uh, slap his face, termination, shackle, get some. We can't actually stop this, I think. Haha, -ha. that's the strat, guys. That is the strat. Oh, he's dead. I knew that was a way. I knew there was a way. The stagger potential is there, guys. GG. That was actually that was actually a cool fight. That was, that was very strategic. Before we head into Stormvale, we make a quick visit to the Weeping Peninsula for two specific items. The Crimson Burst Crystal Tear and the Blessed Dew Talisman. The Blessed Dew Talisman is simple enough to get. The Crimson Burst, though, not as much, as we need to defeat the Urchi Avatar first. And let me tell you, 
Killing these grass types is a totally different experience when you cannot roll or block. They seem to have a lot of poise as they are very hard to stagger, but eventually after getting a stance break, we do manage to scrape through by the skin of our teeth and acquire the crystal tier. Now we just need to get our ass through Stormvale, and my god, going through Stormvale without the ability to roll is definitely an experience, but not really one I would recommend. Inside the castle we can now also collect the Claw Talisman, which is super as we are heavily going to rely on jumping attacks throughout the duration of the run. Once we manage to get to Godric though, there actually isn't that much to fear. This guy, we can jump over some of his attacks, and we have a healing source right now. Uh, no headshot, that is not a lot of damage honestly. This guy does no damage, like... The Earth Tree did more damage to us guys honestly. Yeah, this guy's actually very easy, guys. <laughs> this guy's actually a joke. Godric, you were a joke before, you are a joke again. How? I won't really know lore-wise how this guy even, even got a great rune. Like, he's already dead, guys. Smack! Smack! You might die here, actually. Duh! No! <laughs> I couldn't avoid it. Finally. Took a while, but he is dead. We can't heal, guys, yes. Haha! <laughs> Great Axe OP. Channeling Gimli energy. After Godric's defeat, we go ahead and activate his Great Rune and go to collect Rogier's Rapier in the round table. We will need that for later. Now we proceed to make our way into the heart of Lyurnia. Here we immediately rush towards the ruin strewn precipice. We are gonna need this place later on to progress to Altus Plateau, but for now we just want to collect as many upgrade materials as we can get our dirty little hands on. With a plus 12 great axe now in our possession, we just need one more very special item. Right outside of the Aldonuric village resides a very special scarab, and that special scarab can drop us Vow of the Indomitable. This shield Ash of War, when used, gives us 30 frames of invincibility, which is huge. As a comparison, a light roll in this game only gives us 13 iframes. The only real downside to this is that it uses mana and it locks us in place when used. But if we are clever enough, we can get around those limitations. In any case, this is going to be a massive help when it comes to challenging the upcoming bosses. Uh, okay, now we can actually dodge attacks, guys, which is poggers. Let's see. <laughs> Cannot dodge emotional damage, though. The I don't care, Ash of War. Woo! Fuck you! <laughs> no! <laughs> this is gonna need a bit of getting used to, not gonna lie. And I just stand there menacingly. <laughs> this is the stupidest run ever, guys. I just stand. I literally just stand and don't even care. Bro, this thing lasts so long. And there we go. GG, good fight. <laughs> ah, goddamn feet. I will tank the moon. Come here, please. I don't care. Now I will beat you over the head. No stagger? What is going on? Where is my stagger in this game? Uh, Miyazaki is literally taking my staggers away and I can't move. Couldn't avoid him. Could not avoid him. Okay, Bloodhound Knight is a little bit problematic. Ah, not the Bloodhound Knight. I'm um, dead. I cannot do anything against the Bloodhound Knight. Literally, he's instant death. He is literally instant death. I don't care. I don't care again. <laughs> I almost didn't care about Comet Azur. What is this RNG, Ranala? What is this RNG? Just gonna go into the stupid summons. And she's dead. <laughs> Your dragon means nothing to me, Ranala. Unfortunately, even with Ranala's defeat, we still don't have access to the plateau, so we have to now go back to the precipice and challenge the goddamn magma worm to a fight. I actually walked through his attack. Piece of garbage. Uh, what hit me there? Can somebody explain? He's not staggered. Why is he not staggered? There we go. Staggers are the best thing in this game, I swear to god. 
my car got that mean European shopkeeper face. What the f kind of mean Europeans have you been seeing, my friend? Having now gained access to the Altus Plateau, I realized that we are slowly creeping onto the harder bosses, so I had to figure out which weapon is going to be my main for the rest of the run. But before that, we need to collect a couple of upgrades first, obviously. In the Lux Ruins resides our beautiful girl Gilika. As she is never going to be an issue in any run ever, we just delete her and collect the Ritual Sword Talisman for a nice 10% damage boost. The other upgrade is a bit trickier to get. The item lies inside of Auriza's Hero's Grave. The requirement to clear the catacomb is to solve a somewhat tricky puzzle involving the chariots here. There is a workaround though. By using Margit Shackle inside of the grave, the chariots seem to just kind of like blow themselves up like they're in some sort of Michael Bay movie. Why this happens, I have no idea. But in any case, we receive the Ash of War Holy Ground. It applies a defensive healing zone beneath the character, restoring 17 points of HP per second and providing 20% damage negation. This is massive, as it's one of the two viable healing options for us in this run. The only other viable healing options are the raw meat dumplings, which restore 50% of the player's max HP, but inflict poison upon the player. We can collect a whole bundle of them near the windmill village. They are usually a crafted item, but we can find some throughout the game. We are gonna want to use them sparingly though, as they are a finite resource for us. With all of our preparations now done, let's see how the DTS fares against this build. Smack! That's a lot of damage. Smack! 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 Ayunga and then Ibunga. Smack! Jesus Christ, this weapon is broken, guys! What, what is this strength build? I am literally not even overbuffed. Literally not even. Once we enter into the capital, it's finally time to go and collect our main weapon for the run. To the utmost left of the Colosseum here, we can find a very, very strong weapon, the Star Fists. On first glance, you would never guess that these things would be a good choice for a run like this. But you'd be wrong, as they are actually incredibly powerful on a strength build. So we go and upgrade them to plus 12 back at the round table, and go challenge the rest of the bosses in the capital. My boy Goldfri, let's uh, go do this attack. Now we run. Oh! I'm dead. No way to survive that. Okay, he decided he had enough. Why are you like this thing? Literally cannot dodge. Why are you like this today, Godfrey? What the hell is happening? I will beat your ass. That's 200 damage, insane. Okay, this is actually not... Oh! <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I really need him to do the extra. It's the only legitimate thing that I can... If he does that, it's not gonna work. He's very passive today. For some reason, he's really behaving weirdly. Kukri spam, boys. Kukri spam for the win. <laughs> Kukri spam works. He's gonna die by the Kukris. For the love of Christ. Couple more hits, guys. <laughs> I said Kukris are gonna be important, didn't I? Die! Jesus Christ. Oh my god, the Kukri is literally defeated. Defeated by the Kukris, guys. If I didn't have the Kukris, this would be not doable, it seems. Before the Morgoth fight, we did quickly grab one more upgrade. Back in Limgrave, inside the High Road Cave, we go and face a giant to acquire the Blue Dancer's Charm, for even more damage while on low equip load. This is gonna come in handy in clutch situations. Now back to Morgoth. Okay, let's go. And GG. Simple. Simple and easy, guys. Oh, my poor Morgoth. I'm not even gonna teabag you today. I'm just gonna talk with you. You, you deserve a soul to listen to you. What can I say, guys? My balls are huge and they are made of iron, with spikes on top of them. With all of those bosses now behind us, we are now off to the truly challenging part of the run. The end game. Oh boy. Since our goal is to defeat all the Remembrance bosses, we have a couple of choices as to which one to approach next. Ultimately, I decided upon Rykard, which turned out to be a very bad idea, as you will witness shortly. But even before getting to him, we still needed to take care of the Godskin Noble guarding this place. 
quick side note on this one. The rules at the beginning state that no crafting is allowed, but Chet and I only implemented that rule right before the fire giant, so you're gonna see some pot usage in the upcoming fights. Here you can see though why I ultimately decided to ban them. They make the godskins a joke of a fight. So to make the run more interesting, you won't see them at all from the fire giant onwards. The foreskin duo in the future was an absolute hell as a quick spoiler. Anyways, with the noble down, we go and get an upgrade to our main Ash of War Determination. It's located right after the noble fight and it's called Royal Knight's Resolve. Determination boosts our next attack by 60%, this shit boosts our next attack by 80 goddamn percent, so it's definitely a worthwhile thing to pick up. Now it's time for our boy Rykard. Oh and to make the fight that more challenging, I wasn't allowed to upgrade the Serpent Hunter even once. This was simply destined to not end up well for me. Snake man, be good to us. Bing. Okay, we're getting the hang of this. And dodge! Wow, the Indomitable is actually a really cool Ash of War. I'm not sure why I haven't used it ever before in this game, but I think I'm actually gonna make like a sword and shield playthrough. He's not going to sleep. But he's going to that kind of sleep though. Okay, FP back. Oh my god, why the fast slash? Why the fast slash, Rikard? Let's go... Raw meat dumplings. Now we attack him with this. Fast, fast, fast. Come on, come on, come on. We don't have ultate. We don't have ultate. Here we go. Bro, I feel like he's getting damage resistant when he's low HP. <gasps> he's dead. He has to be dead. Oh, yes! Haha! <laughs> nice. Oh, that was horrible. Don't want to do that again. What was once a simple and fun fight turned into an absolute hellscape during this challenge run. Don't do this at home, kids. With half of my brain cells now evacuated from my body, I needed to first do something relaxing like clearing out all the side bosses that we skipped. Star Scourge Radan in particular, before advancing onto the true endgame. Can I wear some can I wear some armor here without disintegrating into nothing? Let, let's go Jesus. I think Starfist Jesus is always a good choice. <laughs> this is actually biblically going to be correct, guys. Woo! Okay, I need to stop screaming because chat is gonna get angry. Yeah, I didn't two-hand it. Okay, we hit. That idiot. We can't dodge that. Oh god, I forgot. That is not dodgeable. <laughs> okay, I mean, he's dead. He, there's no way he actually survives any further attacks, guys. Slowly walk. And miss everything. And uh, yeah. He's just dead here. And uh, GG. I told you guys, biblically correct. With the side bosses now out of the way, it is time for the mountain tops. On our way up there, we are gonna collect two important situational upgrades. The Red Feather Branch Sword from the Death Bird in Liurnia and the Twin Bird Kite Shield from another Death Bird on the Altus Plateau. Both of these items boost our damage output when on low HP, which will come in handy if you want to just nuke some of the bosses. For now though, most of our build is set up and after we upgrade our Starfist to plus 19, cause we finally have the ability to do so, we are off to face the Fire Giant. Why does this boss fight exist? Because the Lord Miyazaki has decided that it should. I don't care. Fuck you. 4k damage, pretty good. Can't break his poise, which is a little bit annoying. Bam. Bam. Second phase, very easy. Place your hand down, please, my good sir. Bam. Bam. Can I get a bleed proc, Miyazaki? Once in my life. Yeah. Starfish is just too strong, guys. They're just too powerful. <laughs> no dodging is required for this guy, honestly. It's really funny to me, actually, that this is an easy fight. What's not an easy fight, though, is the boss next up. The foreskin duo. First, I just tried going in and giving it my best shot. But, as you might expect, that didn't turn out so well. It's definitely doable going in raw, 
but the fight is way too much RNG for my tastes, so a helping hand was needed. That helping hand is actually a group of arrows called Saint Trina's Arrows, or Mikela's Arrows for the unaware. Usually sleep arrows are a craftable only item, but these bad boys can actually be bought from two merchants in the game, making them a very viable option for this situation. Still, even with sleep on my side, this fight was far from a cakewalk. That's one down. Thank you, finally, something good. There we go. Legitimately no clue. There we go. Very good attacking patterns, very nice. Break his back. Slap his face. Very nice. Please. No. Mistake. No. I'm alive. Jesus Christ. Run, 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 run. Guys, nope. Please go away. Oh. Lord in heaven, give me thy strength. Yes! Oh my god. Okay. That was horrible. With the other half of my brain cells now finally gone, I have officially entered Ultra Instinct, where the upcoming bosses to the Ashen Capital are gonna be a breeze, believe it or not. After the Godskins also, we are now able to upgrade our weapon to the maximum of plus 25, making us now do the maximum possible damage without further upgrades. And with that, it's time to take on the gauntlet of the final bosses. Break his back, let's go! Bam. And GG! Let's go! Goodbye, Malikov. It's it looks easy, but it's not easy. Now we are in a perfect situation. Woo! Second phase. Oh, what? Pog. Was not expecting a... He's dead actually, guys. Or maybe I'm dead, actually, guys. Oh, fuck. Eat the dumplings, you idiot. He's dead. Okay. That was scuffed, but I saved it at the end. Guys, shall we go absolute unga bunga? Let's go absolute unga bunga for this fight. Let's go completely unga bunga. Okay, Toto, don't mess it up. Don't get hit by Radagon's feet again. That would not be fun. Radagon. Wait, how do we dodge this? <laughs> I forgot I need to dodge that attack. Now we do the... I don't give a fuck move. Bam. Bam. We should be dead here, right? Yeah, he's dead. Not surviving this one, my friend. No, no. 4,000 damage. These balls are actually insane, guys. <laughs> Bro, this is actually broken. <laughs> okay, fish be please nice to me. I really need to stand. Ah, today is not the day, guys. Yes, Royal Knights is always activated. Slap is and he should be dead here. And GG. How is the Juchu even called? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. GG boys. The main part of the game has now been conquered, but in retrospect, that was the easy part. Now comes the hard part. We are left with six major bosses, and all of them turned out to be an absolute nightmare to defeat with this rule set. 
Let's go one by one to each boss and challenge them with our spiky balls. Oh, uh, I forgot I popped that. Basically, we don't need anything for the deer, let's be honest. If I get killed by the deer, I'm literally gonna delete the game, guys. Deer, get over here. Oh, for the love of all that is good and holy. Okay, I'm actually gonna die. I actually am gonna die. <laughs> and what is the... Guys, why is he... What the hell happened right now? Guys, why is the deer alive? Why is the... What? What the hell happened? He's just going away! Stay in my place! For the love of God! Why is he just going... Like, I cannot hit him. Uh, healing attack moose. That's a healing attack, yeah. I cannot not get let him heal here. Bro, why is the deer literally taking me longer than the right card? Okay, finally. My God, that was way too difficult. Jesus Christ. Have I known that the deer is going to be this annoying? I, I really think we just need to pray for a really, really good opening attack. I don't see another way, honestly. Almost dead. All right, one down, GG. Okay, let's go, 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 go. Okay, now we need to... Please die. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my god, this is way too difficult. Jesus Christ. First simp incoming. And the first simp is dead. Oh, poise is gonna be needed for these idiots. He has a rapier. No, this is PvP. He's just gonna poke me to death, guys. Jesus Christ. And the simps are incoming, boys. Let's go. It's gonna be a tickle me helmo fiasco, guys. He poised it. It's like they are designed to fucking go over, guys. He did not get staggered. What? Oh my. <gasps> no. I need to hit the mage immediately and kill him. That is a requirement. The mage has to die. Oh, yes, baby. Let's go. Crouch poke. Crouch poke. Most annoying fight in the game. Why does everything have to be hard, guys? Honestly. Okay, one hit. Nice. Dodge between his feet. Very, very scuffed. And GG. Nice fight. Very nice fight. How do we kill this guy? All right, let's just go and see. Shackle. Resolve. Okay, broke his poise. And GG. <laughs> magic is OP, right, guys? Not strength. Magic is OP. Wait, they can be dodged like that? That's insanity. Okay, so Assassin's Gambit doesn't work against this guy. That is a hit. I'm almost dead. But actually, so is he. Star fists are the best weapon in the game. Only when the boss is on the ground. As soon as the boss is off the ground, it becomes a nightmare. <laughs> it's RNG hell, guys. It's again, we are again stuck in RNG hell. Oh my, we need to wait for good attacks. Astel is the hardest boss, guys. If anybody asks who is the hardest boss in this run, it's Astel, guys. Ah. What? You can jump over that? That's poked. Avoidance again. I become too good, guys. Oh. We killed him. We actually killed him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All it took was some... Absolute beautiful usage of WoW the Indomitable. I will not fight this guy ever again. I will never again fight him in any one of my runs. I mean, we killed Astel. How worse can this be? But we can strafe that, thank God. Okay, we, can, we cannot punish that guy. Okay, he can, we can, we can, we can. Oh, GG. Let's go. Maybe not GG, but close. Counter. Nice. Let's go. Guys, plus Siege Sax time. Oh, plus Siege Sax, please. Why am I not running? Okay, Ar. Are... 
Stagger. You need to stagger, my man. There we go. I knew I'm going to be able to stagger him eventually. Oh, that's big damage, boys. That is some big damage, boys. Let's go. He's almost dead, guys. This is now easier said than done. Fire in the hole. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. These boss fights are way too intense when you can't dodge, guys. These, these are honestly way too intense. Cannot follow that up because... She's weird. It's poise break, though. RKR. She's gonna now buff. And she's dead. Bam! GG, guys. Alright. All of those bosses had one thing in common. They were not Malania. As one might expect, a normal strategy against her would be crazy difficult to pull off. We will take a different approach. We only need three ingredients for this recipe. The Greatsword, Troll's Roar and Exalted Flesh. Once we have those things within our possession, we go in. First phase Malenia is a cakewalk with this strategy. What you do is repeatedly spam Troll's Roar at precise intervals. The cue I used is whenever I see her head leave the ground, I press the L2 button. That alone pretty much takes care of the entirety of the first phase. Once she is on 1 HP, we buff ourselves up with everything that we got and throw two throwing knives to trigger waterfowl and finish the fight. Now comes the tricky part. At the start we perform two back steps and run to the left to avoid the Scarlet Ionia. Once she is in it, we shoot her with exactly 10 St. Trina's arrows to put her to sleep. Then we run in and hit her with one free attack. From here on out, all hell breaks loose. Now we just need to pray that she only does very easily avoidable attacks. After around two or so hours of attempts, I managed to get some truly ridiculous RNG in the second phase. She did do some easily avoidable attacks, but her own AI actually managed to screw her in the end, as she always has to go into the second Scarlet Ionia once she is below a specific amount of HP in the second phase. That gave me enough time to calm myself down, regroup, and managed to finish her off with a beautiful kill indeed. Ugh. Besides the mild heart attack I received, I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and subscribe, it helps out a lot. That's all I have for you guys today, and I'll see you in the next one.